Hey guys, it's been quite a while, so it's great to be back on the air with you. In this week's tip, we're going to review the ins, the outs, and everything in between about the mania that is flip charting. My guess is you're probably pretty familiar with the concept, you just may call this thing something a little different. Heck, I remember way back in the day, they used to print these things on, on actual pieces of paper and the cashiers would scan through them to either see the picture or the PLU number, depending on how far back you go, or you might see them on a drum where they spun them around and then they'd pick the item out from there. We've come a long way since then, so let's take a look at what we got. So in most instances, the flip charts are accessed via the POS screen. You might have them on a different menu, but you probably got a button somewhere called flip chart. When you hit that thing, a new window pops up, and it always defaults to family codes within SMS. I'll show you how to change that in just a second, but let's run over the concept. Right now, we're showing fruits and vegetables, you know, those things that don't have barcodes. This function makes it a little bit easier for the cashiers to find the item that they're trying to ring up. Let's try fruits, for instance, and you can see, once we hit that family code, the various fruit items pop up with pictures, it's got the UPC and even a description on there. For the cashier to ring it up, all he or she has to do is simply hit the button. And there you go. Voila. Right on the POS. Okay, so most people know we can ring up produce via flip charts. That's probably the most common use. But there are some other uses that might be of interest to you, so let's just run through those real quick. You know with SMS, you can actually ring up any item that's in the database. We've got search criteria over here on the left-hand side. If you happen to know what department the item is in, all you have to do is click the department button, and then you can select the items from the various departments that are on the screen and that are set up within the system. You could even select meat if that's what you wanted to do. If your cashiers knew what sub-departments and what items were associated with those, they could bring, hit that button, bring up all the sub-departments within the store, and ring up items that way too. Pretty simple stuff. We also have the option to do categories or report codes if those are set up. Now this stuff down here at the bottom, this ABC stuff, that allows you to search by either the first letter of the, of the product name or if you wanted to do all, you could do that. You have various pages. You could scroll back and forth with the previous, the next, the end, and the start buttons or you could do ABCs and then you could type in an item. Let's say I want to look at something that is like banana, type that in, hit search, and it's going to bring up everything associated with banana. Now nothing shows up here because I don't have it set up right, but it gives you the idea. Okay, so we reviewed how easy it is to search for various items via department, sub-department, family codes, that sort of thing within the flip charting feature set. Now let's take a look at how we add something to the flip chart. It's pretty darn easy and I think you'll get the hang of it once we run through the steps. Remember how I said that SMS defaults to the family code when we hit the flip chart button within the POS? Well, I'm going to show you how to set that up. I'm on my family code page with just fruits and vegetables that we looked at just a second ago, and we're going to add an item and actually another family code and put that item in it right here on the page. So I'm going to close out of this, go back to my main POS, and then I'm going to hop over into SMS Pro, my back office. I've already pulled up an item that I want to work with here. Now just work with me a little bit here. My picture is not going to necessarily match, but it'll give you an excellent idea. The reason I did it this way, because even a guy like me can remember this UPC and that's kind of important here in just a second. So the first thing we're going to do is think about an alternative way to use the flip chart functionality. You know it just doesn't have to be about fruits and vegetables anymore. Why don't we use it for stuff like oh heavy stuff you know like bags of dog food or cartons of coke stuff like that. Why do you have to drag out a hand scanner? Why do you have to ask the customer to pull the stuff off the bottom of the cart? Flip charts can do the exact same thing. It's a heck of a lot easier and allows us to get back to what we actually like doing throwing stuff across that scanner. That really sounds like a great idea to me, so let's go ahead and do it. What we're going to do is set a family code. I've got my make-believe item here. I'm going to go ahead under auxiliary menu, and then I'm going to just simply select family code from the drop-down list. I'm going to drag this over here so we can see it a little bit better. And you can see I've got my two family codes that we had back here on the flip charts. Remember when we go over here and we hit the flip charts? We default the family code. We got fruits and veggies right there. Well, when we go back into the back office, our family codes, you can see those are set up. Now to add a family code, it's as simple as hitting plus. Now all we have to do is define the number. We want to make it three, and we're going to call this family code heavy stuff. Just like that. We're going to go ahead and save that, deploy the changes, and we're ready to go. Excellent work. Now all we have to do is associate the item, the make-believe one over here, with the heavy stuff family code we just set up. That's pretty simple. All we have to do is go into the main item attribute table, double click in the family box, and you see this little handy dandy box pops up, and you can see heavy stuff right there. We highlight it, click OK, deploy those changes and save it, and everything is set. The item 123PLU is set up in family code 3, which is heavy stuff. Now let's hop over here to the POS and see if this thing actually works. I come to the POS, I hit flip charts. Wow, look at that. Heavy stuff right there. And you know what? If I click on it, you can see my make-believe item shows up right there. But you know what? That's not very pretty at all. I need a picture just to make sure the cashier can verify that what's actually on the bottom of that cart is really what I want to ring up. Let's do that. Pretty simple as well.
Okay, so we're going to go through the steps on how to pretty up this particular button on the flip chart by adding an image to it. And all we're going to do is assign an image and we're going to stick it on this particular item. Now the guys up in Montreal, especially on the technical team, they get pretty upset with me when I get really, really technical on these videos. But you know what? The heck with them. I think we can figure this out. It's not really that bad. And you know what? If a dummy like me can do it, you can do it too within your own store. And once we're done, I think you'll see that this is pretty easy to go through. So you've probably asked yourself why we have these two icons over here on the screen in this video for the whole run. You probably said something like, self, what the heck is he going to do with that stuff? Well, let me tell you. And actually, I'm going to relate it to a real world scenario where I had to actually add images to my flip charts. So part of this process is figuring out where the heck you're going to get the images for your flip charts. Well, more often than not, you're going to get them from your vendors or maybe your wholesaler. They're usually available for download on their website. Now, this particular image, you can see, it's just a can of Coke. Remember earlier when I said that you'd have to work with me a little bit? Yeah, it's a can of Coke because it's heavy stuff and our item isn't necessarily Coke, but you'll get the idea here. This is an image, and you can see it's a pretty good size. I think it's like 500 by 500 pixels. So, you know, we really can't use that image in SMS because it's just too darn big. So what the heck do we do? Well, we could go in and resize each individual image that we want to do, or we could work smarter, not harder. That's what we're going to do here. So in the not too distant past, I had to create a sample for a trade show I was attending. That sample included, oh, about 100 or so images for the flip charts so that we could make it look realistic. I went to the vendor site, I downloaded all the images, but you know what? They were intended for print quality style of images, and they were just too darn big. I had to find an easy way to shrink those down. And you know what? Through a little bit of web searching, I found a neat little tool. Now this isn't condoned in any way by Lock Software, and it's not the tool that you need to use, it's just one option. You can go out and Google some stuff for yourself and see what you can find. What I like about it though, it allows you to bring in an entire batch of photos, set the size, and change them all at one time. The product is called Photo Sizer, and again, not condoned at all by Lock Software, but it's just a freeware application that's available on the World Wide Web called Photo Sizer. Go to photosizer.com if you're interested and what you can do is drag in your images right into the interface you can see there it is and yeah I was right it's 500 by 500 pixels and you know what I want to change this thing to all oh, the good size I found was 100 by about 100 I'm gonna save it out here to my desktop and I can bring in a hundred of these things if that's what I wanted to do I set the size I hit start and all of a sudden it's gonna tell you well it's finished well you can't see it out of the screen here but I'm gonna drag it in you can see now that my I have my coke images that's 100 by 100 pixels and when we open it up you can see it's a heck of a lot smaller now I'm going to show you what to do with it. Okay, we made our image, it's sized properly, now we need to set it up so we can actually set this to the item. Now this is where it gets really really technical and I'm going to go kind of slow so you can keep up with me. Remember when I said you'd have to work with me on the item just because I can remember the numbers? One, two, three here. Yeah, I know it's not a can of coke, but why I did this? It's ten zeros and it's one, two, three. That's easy enough for a guy like me to remember. So what we have to do is go to the image we created, the one that we resized. We need to click on it so we can rename it. And you know what we rename it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's ten. One, two, three. We rename it the UPC number, the item number, and that is our new file name. We save that and we're ready to go. So this next step is kind of hard to follow too, so again, I'll slow it down. What we want to do, select the image, and we're going to go ahead and copy that image, just because we're in a little demo mode here. You might not do that in the real world. We're going to copy that image, and I'm going to hop over into the actual hard drive of my system. My storeman directory, yours may vary by name depending on how your dealer sets it up. With under your storeman directory, we've got this folder called bitmaps. You know what a bitmap is? It's just images. Look when we open it. We got all the images of all the fruits and vegetables and all that other good stuff that are on our flip charts. So we take that photo that we copied, we all of a sudden just sit in here, double click, hit paste. Our image is going to show up here somewhere. It's probably uh, either at the very top. Yep, there it is. Look at it. There's our can of Coke that we resize. It's 100 by 100. You can see that right there. And we're ready to proceed to the next step. Okay, so what do you think the chances are that this thing actually worked? Well, let's take a peek. I'm over in my POS. I didn't have to refresh or do anything like that. I'm going to go into my flip chart. Look, our heavy stuff button is there. We set that up just a second ago. That was pretty easy. Remember, we're going to hit it. Oh, look at that. Our can of Coke, although it's not a can of Coke on, on the description, but our can of Coke and our images are all right there. All we have to do to select that, just double click it, and you can see that right there on the POS, that thing rang up. That's pretty cool stuff. 
Okay, the last thing we want to cover in our Flip Chart Mania educational video is, you remember when we hit the Flip Chart button and I said that SMS defaults to the family codes? Heck, we know all about it. We set up heavy stuff, remember? We added an item. We even stuck an image on there. That was pretty cool. Well, let's say in your store, it makes much more sense for you to go into the department or even the sub-department level straight from the uh, flip chart button. Well, you know, sub department is a little bit tougher for the cashiers to remember, but department are pretty easy. That's easy enough to do. It's about a 10 digit character string that needs to be added onto the button back here when you hit flip chart. Your dealer knows how to do it, and when you do that, it will automatically go to sub department, department, report code, or category. It's pretty easy to do, and heck, if a guy like me can, you can too. Well, that's it for this week's tip. Hopefully this has given you a couple new ideas on how you can utilize the flip chart in various ways in your store. And you know what? We're growing up now. Flip charts just aren't fruits and veggies. Until next time, have a great day.